This time Al Franken's crossed the line. This lawsuit in Texas, that's Nazar Kazmini's problem and Norm Coleman's problem. This ad and Norm Coleman's attempt to make it my problem instead, well, that's simply shameful. It was a nail biter on election night. Ending with Norm Coleman apparently ahead by 725 votes out of 2.9 million cast. But that lead was less than one half of 1%, which forced a recount. And as the state canvassing board reviewed each ballot, it was watched live round the world on the uptake. Franken, Franken, Franken. When the final votes were recounted, the state canvassing board certified Franken. Al Franken had a 225 vote Franken. lead. I am proud to stand before you as the next senator from Minnesota. But not so fast. Coleman and his team of lawyers filed an election challenge lawsuit. For the Coleman campaign, the task in this court was easy to define but hard to accomplish. It had to prove Al Franken had not won. The only way it could do that was by somehow subtracting votes from Franken's total or opening previously rejected absentee ballots in the hopes that there would be more votes in them for Coleman than Franken. The key issue in this case was going to be how strictly the absentee ballot laws were going to be enforced. The Coleman campaign wanted a loose interpretation of the rules, but in a moment of candor in front of the court, one of the Coleman attorneys admitted that it looked like the judges just weren't buying that argument. I see that you are not buying this, Judge Riley. <laughs> I thought I had a poker face. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But in any event, what can I tell you that will help you to buy it? <laughs> Your concern is that there's a, there's a need for an application granted. Well, my concern is that the legislature passed a statute. Right. And I took an oath to uphold the law. Right. And how are you not upholding the law, may I ask? I you know, typically I'll just judges suggest. ask questions. Yes, I, I know. <laughs> I know. This trial would be decided by who has the most votes. But as Coleman's hopes for overcoming Franken's 225 vote lead dimmed, his legal team started laying the grounds for an appeal, using the same argument that President Bush used to win the presidency over Al Gore in 2000, the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution. Mr. Franken's attorney brought out. If Coleman's hallway spokesperson looks familiar, it's because he was one of the lawyers who represented George Bush in that election deciding case before the U.S. Supreme Court. In it, Bush's lawyers successfully argued that because some Florida counties were recounting votes and others were not, the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution would be violated if the recounts were to continue. A split U.S. Supreme Court agreed and ordered Florida's recount stopped. The election night total stood and George Bush won Florida's electoral votes and the election, even though Al Gore had won the national popular vote. Now, Ginsburg was ready to make a similar argument here.